renderforce.com Close enough so we're in the same screen. Cool. Yeah, we are. All right, then. This is podcast number one with Cody Near as the guest of Bucks of America First Inaugural Podcast. So today we're going to be talking about the beginning of Bucks of America, the why, the how, the what. Once we move, once we move into other topics, we'll be discussing the value of it, our mission, and the future of Bucks of America. So Cody, why don't you give us a little when you decided to create this project? Yeah, absolutely. First off, I want to say thanks, Jeff Vance, for being here. You've been a hell of a guy coming out of Wisconsin for us. Um, awesome that you're running our Bucks of America podcast. This is going to be exciting for our brand, our business, our mission, our values, which we'll share later. And um, the reason why, uh, first, the why. In 2013, December 2013, when I came up with this idea, my why was I wanted to give people in the state a reason to or a way to express their passion about their state and hunting Mm -hmm. and the outdoors so i wanted people to identify with each other okay we are who we are where we are from is Mm -hmm. we 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 the mission's about we with them and they could represent that to each other Mm -hmm. you know through uh sharing you know through sharing uh how they live their lives together in the outdoor industry and what by sharing that information we get to see experiences tools of the trade how they've been able to become successful and also the story one of the main reasons why most of us get into hunting and fishing in the first place is the story behind it the adventure that created us because we all have inspiration from jack london uh, uh fred Indiana, bear yeah I fred mean, bear fred bear i mean bill Indiana jordan's Jones, and all, this stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all these guys are inspirations mm-hmm. hell michael waddell's inspiration to me mm-hmm. david blanton the guys at real tree outdoors when they invented mm-hmm. the monster bucks videos when I was mm-hmm. watching them when I was mm-hmm. nine. Inspiration. Babe Winkleman is one of my <laughs> big inspirations too. Very wise soon. I mean mm-hmm. the guy would sit there with big beard and all and mm-hmm. drink his cup of coffee and what's the other guy that has a show? Um, uh, uh, he even has, I mean what's the guy that owns the Midway USA? I mean it's so prolific in the outdoors. Uh, I'm Larry Potterfield and this is Midway USA. I mean literally these guys are you know the top of the class when it comes to the outdoor industry and these guys mm-hmm. are all inspiration for why we do what we do. That's very so, true. So how have you been able to create this? Yeah, so I'll give you the story of how Bucks of America was started. So it originally was just Bucks of Nebraska. So I lived in Nebraska with my uh, girlfriend at the time, uh, Jana, mm-hmm. and who is now my wife. And obviously as a, as a kid growing up in the South, I loved hunting, loved fishing. Florida, you know, I'd fish in Florida, fishing capital of the world. We would always drive to Georgia, drive to Alabama, drive to South Carolina to go deer hunting, whitetail deer hunting. Mm -hmm. So I knew nothing about hunting in general except whitetail deer hunting. I was entrenched with chasing whitetail deer. I mean, from from tracking them to smelling them to hearing them to to figuring out how I was going to uh, get in their home and create uh, an experience Mm -hmm. for myself. And... I wanted to know how can I share that, what I felt about the outdoor industry, about hunting, about hunting white-tailed deer, specifically, uh, with everyone in the state of Nebraska. Because the state of Nebraska is a very rich farm state, very rich agricultural state. And the individuals there, when when, uh, hunting season comes around, it's football season. Mm-hmm. And when football season's around, it means it's the fall. And there's no better time in the Midwest, as you know, you're being from Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. The fall is, I mean, it's second to none in the mm-hmm. world, the fall in the Midwest in America. So the reason and how I could do that was allowing through social media. So I would find people who harvested deer in Nebraska, and I would share that on the Facebook page. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about me. It was about we, the community in Nebraska. It was about how I can share what we all hold in common, you know, interest and like Mm -hmm. uh, for the hunting of whitetail deer. Now, in Nebraska, you have whitetail and mule deer. And up until last year, I had never harvested a mule deer in my life. I've Mm -hmm. never even been mule deer hunting until last year. I had the opportunity to go to Idaho. And so the reality is 
in southeast Nebraska and south, you know, the, this, the east part of Nebraska, whitetail deer hunting in November. That first week of November comes around, the fall's there, football's around. There's nothing else people love than University of Nebraska Corn Huskers. Okay? <laughs> that is very true. And then, That's very true. I am a Husker fan through with through, even though I, I reside in Wisconsin. And then the second most prolific thing in the fall for Nebraskan is deer hunting. I mean, they come out of the woodworks for deer hunting for those nine days. And I got to experience that. In the South, like I mentioned, we went every weekend. We had three and four month seasons. Mm hmm rifle seasons and you can shoot a buck and a doe a day and sometimes you know in some states you can kill multiple a day mm -hmm. in nebraska you get a buck and you pay for that deer mm -hmm. so it's a rite of passage in the state of nebraska to harvest a buck it is something in the family they were entrenched with i mean everyone is like did you get your buck this year mm -hmm. that's the question that you get asked in the fall in nebraska did the huskers win and did you get your buck in november mm -hmm. that's the two questions they ask and so I, being a Nebraska Cornhusker baseball player, mm -hmm. uh, I had the opportunity to entrench myself in the culture in the, in the state of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, as an athlete for the university. Number two, living there, I loved hunting. I got to enjoy the state. So I, being who I was, entrepreneurial spirit, uh, the passion for outdoors, created the Bucks of Nebraska Facebook page, not knowing kind of how, it would, how this would go and what I was ultimately doing all I want to do was man let's have a place for us to share our experiences the thing grew now to well over 40 something thousand people uh, during hunting season there's thousands of harvest pictures that come through uh, on the daily mm -hmm. to that page from people that live all over the world that come to the state of Nebraska to harvest deer in November mm -hmm. during that harvest season now, don't get me wrong, uh, you know, there's beautiful places in the rest of America, and we'll talk about why we went to Bucks of America and, and that, but uh, the state of Nebraska really built the foundation for us to create the Bucks of America brand because uh, they really embodied what it meant, you know, for our brand of, of creating a reason behind uh, sharing your pictures, sharing your harvest, sharing your story, sharing why grandpa would take his grandson out to get his mm -hmm. buck that year, you know? And uh, so that's really the, the reason why is to give them a, a, a way to share their passion that we all share together. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a part of the rite of passage in the state of Nebraska during the fall in November. So, so how do you explain where the marketing came from? Because it's like you said you went from just a few to several thousand followers on the page. Yeah. So one thing that a lot of people um, will don't understand about the page is you've never no one has ever seen my face on Bucks of Nebraska's page. My face has never been shared on that page in, mm -hmm. ever in my life. My name has never been posted on that page. I've never shared my name or page on that, uh, 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 my face on that page since the existence. It's not about me. It's about the people and about the state and about the outdoors. So my marketing was about them, the people, mm -hmm. and sharing their pictures and their harvest. And it continues to, to do that. And I think what a lot of people uh, now, we've grown larger, a lot of people misconstrue what we'll talk about our mission, our value to what we do is because we sell things, but it's a tangible you know, transaction we make in order to accomplish our value and our mission as a business. So mm -hmm. me selling something is not because I'm out here trying to get rich in my pockets. Nothing mm -hmm. I sell on Bucks, and, and you know this too, goes into my pocket. I don't mm -hmm. make a dollar off of Bucks of America. Mm -hmm. Never have, never will, never spent a dime on myself from what Bucks of America's had. We've donated a ton of time, energy, effort, and money to other people who spend time on, on conservation. We'll talk about that stuff uh, in the future, but my goal was to allow other people to share mm -hmm. their passions so they can relate to each other. And so when one person shares their story, another person has a like story and a like similar, and then you grow that way. So we were able to grow from the first year, we, we grew from zero to 8,000 mm -hmm. in 2014. It was in December 2013 we started. 2014, zero to 8,000 members on that page. And then we went to the next year, we went to 25,000 in mm -hmm. 2015. 2017, we went past 35,000. In 2018, now we're over 43,000 now mm -hmm. people who are actively engaged in our page with millions of engagements and followers and um, 
fans of the of the content that we share mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's not about me not about it's not about the money it's not about the the products that we're selling um, they are just a tangible uh, transaction uh, amongst our business and the people uh, so we can provide uh, to our, our mission so mm -hmm. uh, that's really uh, what we did to get there why mm -hmm. was putting the people first and sharing their content and their pictures and their stories um, which ultimately gives me the ability to be the marketer, which uh, you know I'll share some stories about how how I became the marketer. Um, so in 2013, mm -hmm. uh, we started a Facebook page and we grew that. And a lot of people don't know this about me, but um, I was an internet marketer. I know online marketing, digital marketing very well. Built websites, run paid mm -hmm. traffic. I've spent over a hundred million dollars on paid traffic. A lot of people think that wow, a hundred million dollars. Yes, worked at Target Corporation here in Minneapolis, where mm -hmm. we're at right now. Um, I live in Florida. Jeff, you're from Wisconsin, and yeah. we're in Minnesota right now. I'm putting on an event for marketing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have 75 plus people here that come here to learn about marketing, who I bring here. So, my vision uh, with my marketing is always how I can provide value to the people uh, via whatever I can teach them. Um, you know, to, to create uh, freedom, wealth, financial, you know, independence. Confidence. I get yeah. you. So, so that's the, um, the 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 fact of it is is my marketing. You know, really levies the business for mm -hmm. Bucks of America brand. Um, as you know, and everyone sees, we have ads that run, and we share our pages and you know mm -hmm. products and whatnot. And we have you know certain products that we sell at a, at a rapid rate, higher than others, and that's because I have the the marketing background that I've learned uh, over the course of the years. So um, you know, it really puts uh, this this mission and this goal and this business in perspective for me because this is a passion mm -hmm. of mine it's a business yes mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's really geared it's really comes from the passion I have around the outdoors around hunting around white-tailed deer hunting mm -hmm. white-tailed mm -hmm. deer hunting um, yes I love hunting in general mm -hmm. and I will hunt and go anywhere in the world and hunt. Mm -hmm. okay I will get down with the gritty of them but I have a passion for that animal the white-tailed deer I got you. No other than any, anybody else. Speaking so, of white tails, so yeah. you said you love the, the, the white tails, but as you can visually tell, what is your favorite method to take? Do you like rifle, bow, crossbow? So my favorite method of hunting is actually archery. Mm -hmm. uh, I start September 1st, mm -hmm. archery hunting, and I end uh, in the middle of February, archery hunting. That's an so, extremely long season. This, this is all in? This is all over the United States. Oh, I got you. I understand, because I know... Virginia, their season runs all the way up until April. Alabama through February. It's true. You know, January is Florida, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, the South and South Carolina and uh, places, you know, there's hunting season going on everywhere. So travel makes uh, makes this fun. Mm -hmm. Getting to have uh, you guys, which uh, I'd love to share that story about how we came up with, with what we did to grow our brand. Um, you know, that's really where <laughs> it's gives us the longevity in a season to go out there and archery hunt for, mm -hmm. you know, a long time. So why, don't you, why don't you fill us in that story? Cause so, yeah, so I planted at it. That yeah. Way. Yeah. So, um, so as you guys know, Jeff here is our, what we call head of state in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, like I said, I can't say enough positive things about Jeff. Uh, incredible human being, an incredible individual, very knowledgeable in the outdoor industry. Uh, conservationist first and foremost mm -hmm. and really is I mean wearing the shirt right now uh, is really a high representation of our brand of what mm -hmm. we stand for and why we do this and my my 2014 part of our ma uh, marketing was I wanted you know the, the niche the, the the old cliche thing as you say I want boots on the ground mm -hmm. how better for me to represent the people than to have someone who's actually the people in the state mm -hmm. how could I represent you if you're in Wisconsin Mm -hmm. um, I was in Nebraska. That's how I could represent Nebraska. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, how could I do that uh, at a with a positive light? And how could I do that adequately enough mm -hmm. to where it represented really the state? So that's why I came up with this head of state mission uh, to get an individual like yourself in every state across America mm -hmm. who was there, who was passionate, that fit the bill, that loved what we love, and had the you know the guidelines that would you know just is just genuinely good people. Mm -hmm. So we grew that from uh, the state of Nebraska, and then we went to Iowa, we went into Alabama, we went into Georgia, we went into Florida, we went into South Carolina, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. Michigan. I mean, we've got 
greeted Greg McKay's in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got guys um, all walks of life, man, and they come about that one passion that we share, and that's whitetail hunting, whitetail deer hunting, you know, and uh, just hunting in general, conservation in general. Um, mm -hmm. Now we we got guys in Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no whitetail in Alaska, but we we stretch out there with the Bucks of Alaska brand, and then we've got Wyoming and all the way out west where there's no nothing but uh, mm -hmm. elk and mule deer and whatnot. So we've 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 expanded our business and our you know reach of the brand mm -hmm. with the Bucks of America brand. But um, yeah, so it was bringing you guys in and let you guys represent. And you guys create that content, so you guys as you can share. You are in control of our Jeff here is in control of our. Lots of Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, social media so you can share your how mm -hmm. that works I mean you know that better than I do oh yes I, I live and breathe it because see I don't dedicate anywhere between three to four hours a day on Instagram Twitter Facebook now as a head of state you 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 look at all the entirety of the state you want to look at what problems are having how can we improve upon it and what issues that we're gonna be seeing now future and therefore on out so when I got as asked to be part of Bucks Wisconsin I looked at it as an opportunity to educate myself in all the aspects of what Wisconsin offers, from the new elk season that's recently arrived, the CWD issue we're currently having, the conflict of being able to have a management season for wolves. So as a head of state, you want to keep yourself involved with all these information because at one point in time, we're going to be able to be participating in possibly writing legal uh, bills and laws about how to help manage us out and instead of just being a spectator we want to be somebody that's in the trenches like you said and boots on the ground is key because this is not only going to affect one area it's going to affect and cross the entire area when we have public lands at stake when we have cwd um other different types of uh, issues with them uh, with the wetlands and um, yeah not to mention you got to imagine that uh the issues that the state uh, that you create, the people that you talk to, the people that you pull mm -hmm. in to mm -hmm. our brand and our business and our, you know, ecosystem, uh, those people are going to have kids and those kids are going to be ones that are going to create the future and those, mm -hmm. you know, potentially write our laws, like you said, and create legis legislation and conservation efforts mm -hmm. in the future. So um, no better person than to bring those fathers with, you know, those young kids in and, and share those. Mm -hmm. If anybody doesn't know about the Bucks and Mercury, we don't have cuss words, we don't have um, we don't get into politics. We don't get into religion. We don't get into those things. We focus our lane on that state and what represents that state and how we can grow that state's passion for the outdoors. Bottom mm -hmm. line, mm -hmm. you go look on anything we do, and that's a, that's a part of our goal, our mission. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have things that we get behind. There's there's missions that we have, you know, mm -hmm. from, at the local levels. You know, I know that we drive mm -hmm. some things home in Wisconsin with some with some uh, state legislature stuff, but mm -hmm. it's because we're ultimate goal is to make sure that we're saving you know mm -hmm. for the future um and to that point in nebraska a good buddy of mine eric dinger who has a powder hook uh, mm -hmm. his whole entire mission is is getting more people into the outdoors the whole entire mission mm -hmm. uh, we created a partnership with with uh with powder hook at the beginning of bucks in nebraska i mean getting in front of individuals that want to be in the outdoors mm -hmm. who can't get in the outdoors and then helping them get there. Uh, the mission's awesome. I uh, highly recommend you guys checking out powderhook.com, but uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't say enough great things about Eric. He's not only a friend, he's been a mentor, obviously, in, in the growth of this company and, and uh, how we go about doing business, but we don't share. You know, we're not negative. It's all positive. It's here's what we do, here's mm -hmm. our harvest. And you'll notice when you get on our pages, and, and you see this too, and I love it, is when someone tries to knock the rack size or say something dumb, that gets mm -hmm. immediately shut down by everyone that's a part of mm -hmm. our circle. It yes. doesn't happen in our circle. Mm -hmm. We don't get into comparing sizes of racks and stuff. That's not the. Mm -hmm. That's not our mission. It's not our goal. It's not our brand, and it just doesn't happen in our community. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's literally what embodies the the brand of who we are. Yeah. It's about the harvest and the experience, mm -hmm. you know, generation to generation. So, but yeah, like you mentioned, you're in Wisconsin. I've said it enough. Uh, you know, you guys. It's particularly Jeff here, Wisconsin, has been incredible for us. Just mm -hmm. continuing the grant, the brand, and our growth, and, and uh, you know, you know better than I do. But uh, oh, that is definitely true. Because I try to go after each day what finding out the best knowledge from a credible source to be able to present the issue to the to society. Because knowledge is power, and if if, no, if none of the people understand what's going on how we need to get that information to them and as Bucks of Wisconsin has been growing we're growing followers and people are starting to pay attention to this stuff going down to local DNRs and speaking with them and, and trying to better the overall 
um, experience for whether it be a young hunter to an experienced hunter to a new fisher person to someone that is new, new to fishing because we want to open up our arms to everybody because fishing is a big role of outdoors Absolutely, too. Absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, let's not forget that if we had one follower, one like, and one engagement, that's one more person. That that's the only person that matters. Mm -hmm. One. This all is worth one person. Mm -hmm. If that's one extra person that we can get in front of and help and share and share their pictures and harvest and their story and have a create a positive experience about the outdoors one that one person it's all worth mm -hmm. it no matter yeah. in all the states we combine it up mm -hmm. if it's only one and that's the bottom line and we're mm -hmm. hitting thousands mm -hmm. you know hundreds of thousands at this point now so mm -hmm. um from all from all the states yeah. uh which has been awesome so you can share more about all of our other states i mean uh jeff is in tune with we, we have a group on facebook that we all share and we chat mm -hmm. with these guys have become friends mm -hmm. i've gone uh, i literally went fishing in uh off the coast of um we went out of Orange Beach, Alabama, and I went deep sea fishing with one of our guys mm -hmm. uh, down in Alabama. I've gone to Georgia and hunted. I've gone over to Iowa and hunted. I've even gone and traveled up to uh, here in Minnesota and hunted with a guy that helps us out in Minnesota. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I've gotten to, to join with individuals in this industry, this, you know, this, we say outdoor industry, but the, in this, being able to create this community mm -hmm. that's like independent of anything that we're doing on on in the business sense mm -hmm. it's just meeting the people that are like me and sharing experiences of the hunting and fishing and that stuff bottom line so oh yes and this upcoming season i'll be taking out a first hunter and it's like first time experience and so i want to set in motion for them to, to adapt the, the passion that i did and introducing to somebody to the the whole uh, experience is you got to find that one person that has a is passionate that can teach it and then walk them through it because part of our community is that we work with everybody that has either whether you've been hunting for 20 years or this is your first year because when you get into hunting there's a lot of aspects you got to cover and so with our community we everybody chimes in it's like hey what are you looking at for your your scent control what camouflage you're using what kind of arrows you're using and such and everybody can chime in away in them and you find that most people won't talk negatively about one brand or the other because they all work that's why they're being manufactured and so it's like everybody has a different preference on how to work them and they also have different experiences so if somebody gets a shell a shoulder shot or doesn't get tend to uh, vital yeah they, vital shot vital, you can say hey it's not the arrow or the indian it's actually you know the you're mm -hmm. targeting you know, it's just mm -hmm. shot placement over here or something like that and, and by sh and if somebody's having issue with that somebody will be willing to, ch to chime in because there's more people than they're more experienced than him or i out there it's like we, people refer people to, to john Dully if you're interested in, into archery or randy newberg if you're into rifle hunting because each person though each those caliber have had a lot of experience and a lot of success and fails but it's they teach is what we're getting at absolutely uh speaking of uh people that have a uh, profound impact on what we do is um i mean for this being our first podcast, hey, Box mm -hmm. of America podcast, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, it's we've got to mention the people that have been integral parts in us growing this brand. So, mm -hmm. uh, our heads of state, Zach New down in Alabama, mm -hmm. uh, plays a tremendous part. He rallies the troops you yes, know, on the daily, weekly. Uh, mm -hmm. He's got ideas. He's, um, you know, he's out there. He's got, you know, he's hunting and fishing and sharing pictures mm -hmm. and, I mean, sharing life and living it. Um, mm -hmm. We've got Aaron Brim up in Aaron Brim up in Alaska, you know, mm -hmm. literally yes. in Alaska, um, which is incredible. Seeing, I think he shot a caribou last year. Yes, he did. Shared how he caked it out and everything, which was pretty incredible. Obviously, you're in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, in Cade Sutton Cade from Stratton. He's Stratton in, from in, in Utah. Yep, Utah. Utah. Yep. That gentleman has some knowledge right there, and he's actually going to be going on a hunt with Chad Mendez and Joe Rogan here pretty soon. That's, That's awesome. Long. And then we have um, uh, Forrest Peretz out in uh, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, Forrest's uh, father passed away a little over a year ago, and. Uh, his father really brought him up in in hunting and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And they shared that passion together. And again, he's the he's the epitome of what stands for our brand of you mm -hmm. know coming up. His father showing him the way. Now mm -hmm. he's showing his kids the way. Exactly. And he's a very godly man on top of that. And um, well, who else we got? So we got oh Gre uh, Greg McKay's up in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Corey. Yeah, his last name Corey in Markley's in Kansas. Kansas. There yeah, we go. Corey he he does Kansas. a really good job writing for us. And oh, so you right. check out his blog. And he gives you really good details across not only his state, but other states too as well. Because he finds that he has a knack for it. And it's like, we encourage it. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we've got guys in every state, uh, just about majority of them. 
Um, some of the guys uh, work, you know, nine to five, but not some of them. All of these guys work nine to five jobs, mm -hmm. by the way. These guys, like I said, this isn't a thing about. Um, this is no money grab for us. This is a. Uh, this is what we're passionate about. This is what we live, eat, and breathe every day, mm -hmm. uh, hunting and fishing. So, um, they're all walks of life. I mean, they got kids. They raise their family. They go to work. Mm -hmm. They go hunting when they can. They got vacation. You know, they mm -hmm. live, eat, and breathe this stuff. And we share hunt back and forth oh, yes. uh, all over the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes it fun. I even have family members. Indiana's ran by my cousin. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Illinois ran by his wife. Uh, so. So that's so, a, that's an interesting dynamic on yeah, there. So, so does she work in Illinois then? So you want to know what's crazy is they live on the border. They live on the Wabash River in Indiana. Okay. She owns the deer processing plant in Illinois. No kidding. Yeah. He uh, is one of the most rabid, uh, and this is funny, most rabid rabbit hunter I've ever seen in my entire life. He grew, we grew up rabbit hunting in Indiana. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Got rabbit dogs and everything. But uh, that deer season comes around, boy, in Indiana, he's all over it, you know, <laughs> he's right on his backyard, right on the Wabash River. So um, they're perfect. I mean, they live the life. They're farmers, you know, they're mm -hmm. they, they watermelon farmers and whatnot. They, they live the life. So um, awesome representation of the brand and, and what we stand for and sharing our mission, sharing our our brand out there so it's uh makes it fun so um and then not to mention we got nick Han, who's been a, an integral part of our design Dying, and designs and yes that man puts in a lot of hours so thank you yeah yeah thanks nick uh for your help um uh, nick's been a, a an integral part of us uh, being able to create what we do online and and really take mm -hmm. what's up here for me and get it out there on the digital yes. perspective and the market side of stuff and so. if you see something can tweak he, he gets right on top of it and when i came up with the logo for bucks of america's podcast i woke up the next morning with a logo sitting in my inbox and yeah. it's like he was fired up about it it's awesome. and it's pretty sharp we haven't released it yet because like we're still working on you'll see it though i mean yes. eventually this video will come out they'll mm -hmm. see this everything we'll see, everything we'll, will be on there see it we'll, we'll be a well polished machine mm -hmm. by then so um, what else? Uh, I mean, is, is the mission of the podcast. So this podcast is a lot of responsibility, and I want to take this on because I, I want to continue learning about different aspects of all the states across the board, and with our community, it's going to be able to pull that information from there. So if you have a an issue in Nebraska about CWD, well, there's 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 a scientist here in Wisconsin that has. All, a lot of answers, but not all the solutions for it. But if you want to find out more about uh, whitetail hunting in Texas and how to develop habitat in the high Wisconsin, desert country. Justin Gilbreth down in yeah. Texas. I mean, there we go. Justin, See what I mean? Yeah, and so, there. and then with Alabama too, it's like talking with uh, Zach, Zach yeah. New regarding his, uh, how he focuses on and how he bought his land and how he goes after it. And it's very interesting to see all these people and how they interact. And then also bring in their... Uh, I mean, you're talking mm -hmm. about hunting in different latitude and longitudes in the United mm -hmm. States. Mm-hmm. Deer hunting in Florida ain't the same as deer hunting in Nebraska. Amen to that. Yeah, I mean, it's night and day difference, but mm -hmm. they still deer hunt, mm -hmm. okay? And it's still a hunter through and through. Mm -hmm. uh, how they hunt, what they hunt over, how they track it and all that other stuff, I mean, it's that's the reason why. It's, you mm -hmm. know, we bring all those walks of life to one spot. Mm -hmm. I mean, the America concept now is, man, let's take this state-centric that we created, state-centric focus that we're doing, mm -hmm. Let's get this to every state, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, state willings. You know, it's, it's willing if they if they participate. But uh, hopefully, one day our mission is to get out in front of every state and and really grow this brand and be able to give more for for mm -hmm. what we do. So, and still a place in history for the upcoming generations. This where they have a place to hunt, a place to fish, and enjoy the lifestyle that we are right now because we're currently in the good old days of the hunting, and now we got to maintain that. And there's things that threaten our. Uh, our livelihood and our lifestyle and so we got to work hard for it we've got to come up with solutions but do not create a negative atmosphere because we have to create a positive one to allow change yeah and keep the younger generation passionate mm -hmm. about wanting mm -hmm. to go outside and, and hunt and fish for sure so <laughs> which is um again them going outside is the reason why we do this so just to reiterate i don't take a dollar from bucks of america i've never spent a dollar that we've made from selling the products that we mm -hmm. have as a tangible exchange for what we do here. Now you invest a lot of that money into our future. Yeah. It's several different charities. Why don't you go into depth about so, that? So uh, to date, since 2013, we have put $180,000 into conservation. Now well, folks, this is the first time I've ever heard this too. So this is heartwarming to me. So I'm looking to expl uh, express this more because this is something that was not known to me. And it's not a thing that's, nor should it be boasted, mm -hmm. okay? 
people who do something good and then turn around and show everybody, look what I did, is, I mean, what kind of righteousness is that, you know? Mm -hmm. Let me go show you my kindness. No, that's mm -hmm. not how it works. Yeah. It's not the, that's not the, the, the premise behind doing a good deed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so my father-in-law, uh, very passionate about Pheasants Forever in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. We've put 80 grand uh, into the Pheasants Forever organization mm -hmm. in general. And a lot of that towards, uh, you know, new seed drills, new mm -hmm. uh, products. I mean, they do a banquet every year, donate tens of thousands of dollars in products mm -hmm. uh, towards their banquet and continue to get the youth. They have a youth mentor hunt in Pheasants Forever that you know every year and every chapter, uh, helping get more youth out there and actually, you know, take a bird down, you know, with the shotgun, get out there and see mm -hmm. how that thing goes. Uh, so we put a lot of that money into being able to do that. They feed them lunch. Someone's got to pay for it. You mm -hmm. know, that's where our dollars go. Our dollars go towards that conservation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the last three years, we've given twenty-five thousand dollars to Whitetails Unlimited, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't understand that Whitetails Unlimited. You can go on their website. You can click their conservation. You can see where their dollars go. Okay, mm -hmm. we've given tens of thousands of dollars to local state organizations like the the Big Game Conservation Association of Nebraska, mm -hmm. BGCA. We've gone to the banquets, we donate our money, we put our time and energy and effort into from a local level, and we give them that money so they can go out there and they can continue to create conservation efforts. They can go out there and, you know, seed and plant and burn and change things that we need to change to make sure that we hold this stuff for our future. Mm -hmm. Again, we sell hats, we sell shirts, and we sell decals. Mm -hmm. That is nothing but a physical, tangible exchange, okay? So we can create income to give a value to organizations that are doing conservation. And can I? Mm, I'm a marketer. I have a business. I have people that I run and, and whatnot. I hunt mm -hmm. when I get to hunt during the time of year. There are people better than me at conservation efforts. Mm -hmm. So I give my money to those people for a reason so they can do what they do well. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, if we look at it from a, an aspect of, you know, look what we did for, look what I did for you lately type of thing, then we've failed at our mission. And we don't want to fail at our mission of continue to, to you know, preserve and to conserve and to bring youngsters into the outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, and I definitely don't boast about it. But I think it's something that I needed to share, uh, especially on this podcast that we're going to get out there uh, mm -hmm. with individuals. So... A lot of people think that we're some big high flutin making a lot of money business, but absolutely not. You know, while we're for profit, our for profit turns around and goes to conservation mm -hmm. efforts, to the the experts. Mm -hmm. They have their missions, they have their people that are much better suited than I am or you or any of us in our business to to uh, preserve and conserve uh, for mm -hmm. the outdoors. So, uh, NWTF, uh, QDMA. Uh, both at national and state levels. Mm -hmm. uh, like I mentioned, Whitetails Unlimited, go to their banquets. You can look at their national sponsors online. You'll see our name, Bucks of America, there. You don't get there unless you give them money and you help them you mm -hmm. know, to complete their, complete their mission. Uh, and you can see where the money goes, which yeah. is important. A lot of people, oh, you're just donating to No. No, I've been there. I've seen where they, that money goes. Mm -hmm. I've seen them go to the field. I've seen them deliver bags of seed to you know, local uh, conservation organizations so they can plant for those bird that mm -hmm. bird and buck seed that goes there to plant so we can have more places for those birds to live mm -hmm. I've seen them deliver that stuff was delivered and made all across mm -hmm. from Nebraska to Florida down to Alabama and up there in Michigan mm -hmm. all the way across America uh, so just I mean can't reiterate enough mm -hmm. this is just nothing but a tangible exchange while we sell decals and we sell you know, t-shirts and hats, and uh, we'll talk about the future here, what we're about to expand mm -hmm. into with a lot of our new partnerships, but, yeah. uh, you know, that's uh, that's really the, the story behind it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I want to hit home on, as a head of state, that a lot of us get involved with the conservation aspect of it, where we volunteer with backhunters, country and anglers, with other different organizations around local, so this way we can help uh, bring attention to certain issues and keep instilling our heritage to our future generations. Yeah, absolutely. That's the key behind the whole head of state uh, background mm -hmm. is to have you guys go out there, boots on the ground, and be a part of your state, changing it and helping mm -hmm. it and conserving mm -hmm. it growing. So our future, it's, it's very bright, won't you? Yeah, so uh, this last 2018, 
uh, we've hit some uh, some changes in our business model. Mm -hmm. uh, let's be real. I mean, we've got to continue making money so we can continue to donate that mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. and we can continue helping drive home our missions. Uh, so the value that we're providing uh, in this industry, because if we're not providing value, then what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're gonna actually go into. We have partnerships now with Tacticam and Leopold and mm -hmm. Primos, and uh, we're mm -hmm. going to sell everything that they sell under the sun mm -hmm. in the outdoor industry. We can be a resource online mm -hmm. all across America to sell uh, products mm -hmm. that people already buy. Yes. Okay? We're just a point of sale. We're just, I mean, we hold no allegiance to any what brand or anything mm -hmm. like that. And uh, the goal is to just sell as much as we can so we can turn around and give more. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. Yeah. And the way we can sell more is by leveraging other people's brands and products that they already sell a bunch of, you already use, you already know. Mm -hmm. That just gives us, you know, an open door for us to continue uh, driving home our mission and our value. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, the, the biggest piece about creating that online relationship is that, again, I'm, me personally is not the face, and our head of states uh, within their states are. You know, those people are. You guys represent the business. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it certainly is not about me, and mm -hmm. I certainly don't boast uh, mm -hmm. the money we donate or the money that it makes or how we generate or whatever. So if anybody has a product that they create or behind or invent or whatever, mm -hmm. we want to be that place that you can go put your product mm -hmm. out there. So if you have a, 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 a legit product that you've put a lot of time and energy effort behind, Mm -hmm. that you have great packaging. I mean, we're not looking for the guy making, you know, knives in his garage. You know, we want to sell high-quality stuff because our brand is important in mm -hmm. the long term. Um, but we want to get behind those local small businesses that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, have products that are in this industry from every state. So, um, again, reach out to us. Uh, send me mm -hmm. an email, Cody at Bucksub.com, if you want to mm -hmm. uh, send me an inquiry on products and say, hey, I'd love to sell my product on your site and let mm -hmm. us know. Because the nice thing about our point of sale being bringing all these brands in there, because we're helping everybody out because it's get, allowing one person to put food on the table, build a business, hire new people. So please send us some information so we can help you, so we can help others. Yeah, yeah, help, help us help you help others uh, mm -hmm. for sure. So um, that's what's in the future in the pipeline for the brands and the products. Uh, really looking forward to it. We've got a ton that we're onboarding right now. Zach has worked his butt off on that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of guys have... Uh, introed me to uh, a lot of owners of businesses and, and really brought mm -hmm. some some cool products to the table. So yeah, really I know I've that. hit I've sent uh, this week alone I've closed five out of six people I've talked to. That's awesome. Only because closer baby. <laughs> yeah, it's only because they, they they offer the ability for drop ships this way. Then we can help them out as just an, another access point for them to benefit them and their employees and continue growing their communities. Yeah, because uh, let's just drive that mission home again. Mm -hmm. These businesses, I mean, let's be real, in the outdoor industry, there's not a ton of people out there just killing it, making millions and millions and millions of dollars, and they're not just padding their wallets full of it's just hard work. Hard work, man. I mean, these products, they, yeah, sure, they might do two, three, five million dollars in sales, but let's be real, cost of goods, cost of labor, cost of shipping, cost mm -hmm. of overhead. I mean, these are just people feeding their families, trying to mm -hmm. sell something they're passionate about, a product, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it's a tangible exchange to continue to create money so we can help our mission. And mm -hmm. um, while they look at it as they want to provide, you know, they're providing solutions to problems with their products, uh, we're looking at it to provide, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, a solution to our problem, which is to how we're going to, you know, get more money to give to more people so we can continue mm -hmm. to conserve and, and create. Again, do we boast? No. Conservation? We how do. long have you been around? For, For Bucks of America. You've been a couple 2016. years now. I'm one of the, one of the founding and, group people in the, and, the whole and, party. And tonight it's your first night you ever knew we don't have And that's the way I want to keep mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Because it's irrelevant. Um, mm -hmm. It's not It's not the mission. It's not Absolutely. The goal. But I think it's important to know, um, unfortunately, we have those individuals out there who they troll and they say negative things about us and what we're doing and the products and whatnot. But the reality is, I mean, uh, if they only knew the hard work and sweat and tears and blood and everything that mm -hmm. I myself have put in with my wife and... Uh, mm -hmm. Trying to grow this thing so I can have the miles you traveled. I mean, good lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, good lord. People don't understand, uh, and they don't understand why. You know. I uh, think this right here, this tonight, will give everybody a good picture in their mind and a vid good video to, to understand what we do to help our overall community. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. And um, 
again, I mean, we want to be a, an open book, so email us, call me. I mean, mm -hmm. my phone number is actually on the website. People don't understand. That's my cell phone number. You call on bucksup.com. People, mm -hmm. they call me. I've had many of conversations with customers that I go into, man, where do you live? Where do you hunt? How you fish? What pole you like? Mm -hmm. What lure you, what fish you mm -hmm. catching? What's the bite look like? You know, mm -hmm. how you know, are the deer moving today? Are you fishing this weekend? Mm -hmm. Those conversations I love. Mm -hmm. Man, I just, uh, I love it. And, um, you know, that uh, came from my father, came from me growing up hunting down there in the south, mm -hmm. bringing full circle, you know, mm -hmm. growing up down there, it's uh, different, uh, much different, you know, than, than how it is today. Uh, we're losing people fast. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're More to growing. Xboxes than anything else. Man, they're sitting inside, yeah, playing the video games and whatnot. And, uh, I mean, so... But to that point, man, I'm like I said, I'm a marketer first, so I'm I'm uh, working on some things to get in front of this young generation mm -hmm. on these Xboxes. So I'm actually going to try to push uh, some of our uh, efforts in the outdoor industry onto platforms like Twitch, um, like Xbox Live, and go on there and try to put our missions for these conservation organizations on these platforms that these kids are on and share things that are fun. I mean, you've got big the Buck Hunter, the the, the actual game. Yeah, that's okay? a, it's still around, it's still been around, around since the 90s. Hunter, okay, so mm -hmm. like, people still like it. People, they have a Buck Hunter, I don't know if you knew this, they have a Buck Hunter contest in Chicago every year. No kidding, did not Thousands know that. Thousands of people go there and they compete at Buck Hunter. Mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine, he's, he's over in college, uh, he actually he actually won at his local bar, went to compete at a regional level, and went to the Nashville out in Chicago, and was competing at a, at a high level with people playing the Buck Hunter game, but um, it's just awesome that, uh, you know, I hope that people understand mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, there's people out there working towards um, creating that future for our younger generation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not going to give up on trying, that's no. for sure. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Eric Dinger, Powder Hook, he's working through. He's got PowderHook.com and his app. Mm -hmm. uh, the endless amounts of organizations that, that they partner with mm -hmm. uh, from nonprofits, for profits. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a for profit business that we mm -hmm. donate our money to uh, nonprofits, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's... Um, we got multiple apps out there. We got Where to Hunt app, which is which yeah. is growing popularity, plus uh, Fish Brain, if you're into fishing, too. So it's like we, 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 we no, focus on... We're not partial to anything, either. No, uh, we focus on everything. I've we already, love it all. I've already dropped Midway USA, and they're going to sell the same thing we sell, you mm -hmm. know, so mm -hmm. uh, everyone knows, you know, Midway USA, you can go there and buy anything hunting and fishing, but we're going to sell mm -hmm. the same stuff they sell, you mm -hmm. know? Why? Because we have our our community and our mission i can't tell you how much and how awesome uh, our community has been mm -hmm. to help us grow this brand to um to where it's at today you guys for being a part of our heads of state um where we're going to go in the future these brands that we're going to be able to leverage with their sales and stuff i'm super excited for the future mm -hmm. and uh, really look forward to uh the next podcast you do yeah looking forward to seeing what you do for the bucks of america brand on this podcast mm -hmm. and uh I really appreciate, obviously, being the first guest. Jeff was adamant, by the way, guys. Oh, yeah. I said, "Hey, man, I don't know. I'm I got people here, and I sold people this money to be at this event, and I've got I got the, mm -hmm. right right now, guys. I can tell you, it's it's 11:24 p.m. right now. Okay, <laughs> and we're doing this podcast live here tonight in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, how far is your drive? Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. He drove up here. I flew from Florida. Yeah, to be up so here for again, so to make this thing happen because it's that important to us. Mm -hmm. You know, your text to me, you literally said, "Let's make this thing happen," mm -hmm. right? And so I knew it was important to you. It was important to me to do this. So, um, and again, that's to reiterate, that's our brand. You know, mm -hmm. it's what's important to us. Because so. I see a much bigger picture happening in the next couple of years of bringing conservation to another level, bringing international speakers, something that really can weigh in on all this stuff here. And this is just a beautiful platform. And yeah. we have the community to back it up. So let's do something a little fun here. So I'm going to go Facebook Live real quick on the podcast. Okay. Okay, and we're going to share what we're doing out here to everyone in the uh, mm -hmm. the hemisphere of uh, Cody Near. And um, let's just do this Facebook Live. And I'll tag uh, Inaugural. Make sure I spell that right. Inaugural <laughs> uh, Bucks of America podcast. It's exciting, guys. Mm -hmm. Podcast with host Jeff Bands, head of state, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do this. This is going to be awesome. So, uh, you guys can be a part of our Facebook Live here. All right. So, going Facebook Live over here. 
What's up, everybody? It's Cody Near here. Uh, I'm here with Jeff Vance, head of state from Bucks mm -hmm. of Wisconsin. We're doing our inaugural podcast for the Bucks of America brand. BucksUp.com, you'll see this. It'll say podcast. Uh, we'll have a live stream on there mm -hmm. uh, every month. You're going to do this? Well, it's going to be once a, once we get everything rolling, it'll be once a week. Jeff's going to be committed, baby. Once a week, uh, we're going to talk about conservation, our products, our mm -hmm. partners, our national partners, mm -hmm. conservation efforts, mm -hmm. uh, how we get youth into the outdoors, mm -hmm. hunting and fishing, how we continue to grow. And bring in guests from all across the country. So if you're out there and you're looking and you're from any part of, of the world, uh, love to have you guys on the podcast. Reach out to Jeff Vance Please. right there uh, on Facebook and uh, keep in tune for what we have coming in the future for the Bucks of America podcast. Appreciate you guys. Well, that was fun. Uh, that was. And I appreciate the, uh, you know, having me be the first I think that was a great way to end it because I just hit pause okay cool so this way if we wanted to add something more into it so that's awesome man. yeah they'll take we're at yeah we're at 45 minutes or so now you can keep that